Here we are at week seven already. Boy, how's the term just flies by when you're having so much fun, right? Well, this week is chapter six, and this is kind of a fun chapter because it deals with e-commerce. Now, we're all pretty familiar with e-commerce, especially after the pandemic. I think all of us have spent a lot more time making purchases online than we ever did before. And so you might think, what's there to learn about e-commerce? Well, actually a lot. To have a good e-commerce website is not a trivial task. And so there's a number of things that we need to look at in this chapter to see what makes a good e-commerce website for a business. So some of the things we're gonna learn this week is I like the author starts off with a digital presence strategy. The key word there is strategy. You need to think about, you just don't throw up a website. You have to think about what are you trying to accomplish with your website? And as the chapter goes through, you'll see there's a number of different focuses you can have, whether it's entertainment, information, providing products, but you need to decide that first. What are you trying to accomplish? Then we do get into a little bit of the technicality behind how do you make a website work? Some of the things like the, you know, the URL, what's involved in there, uh, you know, how do you, how do you get to any website around the world? How does that all work? It's pretty amazing and fantastic, but we do touch a little bit on that. And in particular, I like that the author makes reference to CSS, which are, those are style sheets used in web programming. Something that's really important, just like when you use Word to create a document, the importance of using Word's style function. In a website, cascading style sheets are really essential. It makes it so much easier to have a consistent look and feel to your website and also to make changes if you want to adjust something globally on the website. So it is an important thing when you're designing a website to be, again, to have a strategy and intentional design and make sure your web programmer, whether it's you or someone else, really has good tools and follows good practices of structured programming and style sheets. And then of course, the whole thing of how do we make e-commerce work? This involves financial transactions. How does that work in a digital age? Even touch a little bit about, what about digital currency? But then we also talk about the difference between what's called e-commerce, which is typically, think of it, you're doing it on your desktop or your laptop, versus mobile commerce. And the major difference there is the screen size. You know, there's still far too many websites that when you try and access them on your smartphone, it's very difficult. You end up having to use your, you know, two fingers and expand open to read stuff. Very cumbersome to do that. And then we touched a little briefly on this on website marketing. Now, unfortunately, we can't get into a lot of detail. Uh, we cover more of that in our uh, marketing classes. But we do touch, it, you know, in the chapter here just a little bit, you know, how do you use a website to market to your customers? And then the last topic that the author has for this chapter, Web 2.0, and actually I like to really say, <clears throat> really it's Web 3.0 and beyond what we're talking about. Web 2.0 was interactive, true, but our interactiveness has really gone way beyond Web 2.0, and you could call it Web 3.0 now. Some of the things that go on with with crowdsourcing and um, GoFundMe, things like that, really, I think, have moved to a new level of engagement with users than originally 2.0 was. And the interesting thing about all this is there is no official standard that defines what was Web 1.0, Web 2.0, Web 3.0, Web 4.0. Uh, in fact, the, the whole phrase Web 2.0 was coined by a speaker before he gave a presentation talk. So it's uh, it kind of means whatever people want it to mean. 
And then lastly, you know, this chapter, we just scratched the surface. We do have an entire class, BA207, that focuses strictly on e-commerce. I happen to also teach that class, and I can tell you, even in that, I feel like I'm only scratching the surface with the amount of time we have. It's a very, uh, you know, you can get an entire degree in web design and all the things that go in on that. But if you do have more interest in e-commerce, take 207 and we'll spend more time focusing on some of the intricacies and aspects of it. And the assignment for this week is actually one I always find uh, quite enjoyable have you go out and research someone that you would consider has a really good web design and someone who has a really bad design and then compare and contrast them what works well on the good design what work doesn't work well on the bad design and also even on the good design what could they do better i like to learn from other people's successes and mistakes and so when you look at good and bad designs like that it can help solidify in your mind yeah what what really does make for a good website and a good experience for your customers? And so that's it for chapter six, week seven. Hope you enjoy it.